TFTK, Translating Pharaoh, Transforming Knowledges. TFTK explores and translates into English the work of Brazilian French historian, theorist and architect Sergio Ferro, whose work demonstrates that architecture is based on the separation of design from the construction site. TFTK looks to Ferro's work to better understand the relationship between architectural design and the production and labor of building. This audio series has been inspired by the research of TFTK academics, developing the new field of production studies. Episode 6. China is the method. In this piece, you'll hear from Will Thompson. Will is a researcher of anthropology and architecture, focusing on rural-urban migration in China and the relationship between architecture and the construction industry. So I get a call and the contractor, his nickname was Qin Shou, the beast, which is how I had entered it in my phone. I answer and he's like, Tom, I've just gotten back from a trip. You want to be one of my workers? And I was like, uh, that, no, that's not, I mean, come down now to, to the site and bring a beza, a blanket. Why, why would I bring a blanket? You want to be one of my workers. You're going to live in the dorms. He had correctly, I think, interpreted my abstract research of access, presence, being able to talk to people as I wanted to be one of his workers. My research is about the relation of design to labor. I spent two years of fieldwork in Xi'an, China. I worked on a construction site for three months, as well as in architecture offices, interviewing local architects and trying to understand how architecture understands its relationship to the labor that it depends on. And our relationship to Chinese labor isn't just in architecture. For most people outside of China, the iPhone is the most direct relationship they have to Chinese labor, which is also because sweatshop activists have made the iPhone an object for contemplation about the conditions of Chinese labor in Foxconn factories. You can't talk about the iPhone as just a detached aesthetic object without thinking about the worker suicides and the conditions where it's made. But you can, in architecture, talk about design qualities of any number of pieces of architecture as though the conditions of their production don't matter. Architecture is the object that I'm looking at and China is the method. And what I mean by that is that I'm interested in problematizing architecture rather than problematizing China. What I wanted to understand was China's huge development and building. What does that mean for thinking about global architecture? Because so many practices from England, from the US, from Europe are designing buildings that Chinese build in China. And that relationship is something that architecture hasn't really faced. China shouldn't be just another cultural style that architects consider. It should be really thought of as an encounter that's reshaping the discipline and the practice. I don't have any construction skills. It was really ludicrous that I was brought up on the construction site. But to do participant observation on a construction site means you have to participate, and the form of participation is labor. I ended up working on the scaffolding 19 stories up, installing steel frames, mostly assembling the bolts. It was monotonous work. It was just work for as many hours of the day as there was light. The time that the construction workers were in the city to work, they were there to work. They didn't really listen to music while working, didn't talk much, didn't drink, didn't eat meat. 90, 95% of the Chinese construction workforce is migrant workers. That's domestic migrants, so people who move from the countryside to the cities. There's a document called the HUCO. The HUCO determines where you can access state services. For migrants, their HUCOs remain in their hometowns. So that means that they can come into the cities and they can work, but their kids can't access school services. Their pensions are not there, although state welfare apparatus is all administered from home. That means that their productive labor is welcome in the cities, but their reproductive potential, their ability to make that place a home is foreclosed. One thing that spending time with people in that situation did was it's a personal investment of time and it was being with people in their daily lives that's meaningful, that gives you a connection to those people and it repositions you. Everything above you is kind of a black box. An architect is just one other 
person up there whose various decisions end up at the point where you're working, giving you orders. Having come back from field work in China, I wanted an idea of what is the relationship of design to labor. And I thought architects must have a well-articulated theory. And when I started reading, I realized they don't. They had instead almost a negation of that relationship. There was a real definition of architecture as something apart from building. China has really become a, a place that's known to foreign architects. As an anthropologist of construction, I'm jealous of the amount of construction sites that they go to. Construction sites are just fascinating, spectacular places, generally. You get these stories from architects who go onto the construction sites and see the most amazing things. They have these encounters, which I think are some of the most interesting to them. They are encountering on the construction site in China, people across class, across race, across nationality, language, but organizationally no contact with them, socially no mode of working with them, even though their work brings them together. And in the field of architecture, I think they don't have a way of thinking about what their experiences are. And that seems a huge loss to architecture to not be able to process some of the most interesting encounters that architecture puts its practitioners in.